On an unassuming street in the heart of Park City, Utah, lies the center of excellence, a state-of-the-art training facility for the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Association. This facility was opened in May of 2009, and it's had a terrific effect on the preparation of the U.S. team and also the scientific basis of their preparation. It's like a Disneyland of uh, training facilities and sports science labs, and the athletes are tested and monitored every day, and that's really enabled us to transform the way we prepare our athletes physically. The off-season preparation is really important to minimise the chance of injury. We're really trying to simulate some of the unusual positions that skiers get into when they're coming down the hill. The ski team has definitely taken a step forward in conditioning, all that kind of stuff. I think especially, you know, having the center of excellence. With myself and my dryland training, I've definitely, you know, learned a lot over the years from the various trainers we've had, and I think that's been pretty successful for me. At just 19 years old, Michaela Schifrin has quickly become one of America's brightest stars and accomplished racers. Under the radar, Michaela made her FIS Alpine World Ski Championships debut two years ago in front of a raucous crowd. The crowd in Schladming was unbelievable. There are, I think, 30,000 people in the stands, and it was not even nerve-wracking. It almost helped me calm my nerves, because I'm like, there are that many people in this world who want to watch me ski. I'm like, all right, this is going to be fun. I'm going to put on a show for them. Ski racing is such an insane sport, because all we're trying to do is go faster. There's so much athleticism and guts involved, and if you're not on the edge, then you can pretty much know that you're not going fast. Here's where she's got to handle the little bit of deviation down here where Reese had trouble. And Schifrin trying to get ahead of the Austrian Kurt Gosser at the end, and she's done it. 22 100 Schifrin into the lead. The 17-year-old sensation won world championship gold and the spoils of celebrity that come with it. After winning the medal, it was like, a straight 12-hour tour of going to different, like, media outlets and just, you know, really exhausting. <laughs> but it was a very exciting, too. We were thrilled with her success. We had a feeling she could do it because every step of the way, people were saying, wow, she's really fast. Michaela's meteoric rise to the top began in one of America's premier winter playgrounds. Kayla. Well, I grew up in Vail. I was born in Vail, Colorado, and of course it's the most epic ski town you can imagine. So I grew up skiing and it was kind of just a family recreation fun sport. And my mom actually raced a little bit. So my brother started racing first and then I followed in his footsteps and that was actually when I really fell in love with the sport. That's my performance. Kayla's doing her post-Olympics ice skating performance. We just always made sure we gave her the option of doing one of the other sports or doing something else. And every time we gave her the other option, she always said, I want to be a ski racer. As a youngster, Michaela found inspiration in one of Vail's most legendary residents, Lindsay Vaughn. Lindsay was my biggest idol when I started ski racing, and she had just come onto the World Cup, and I loved the way she skied. and. I loved that she was feminine, but also really powerful, and she has this way of, in the starting gate, of like staring lasers through the course. After dominating junior events across the globe, the U.S. ski team came calling. Michaela was just 15 at the time. Probably the, the biggest thing that's contributed to my success is the support I get from my family. I've been really lucky with being able to have my mom come on the World Cup with me, which is a little bit unusual, but it's just the team that I have is also a huge reason why the success came soon, and it could have easily gone another way. One of my biggest roles, I would say, is to help her stay focused and to help her limit distractions, try and keep things as normal as possible. Off-season is kind of about getting refreshed and re-motivated and also getting stronger. When I'm not at ski camps, I'm just working out six hours a day. At this point in my life, being 19 years old, if I were to take two weeks off of working out, I would lose a lot more strength than, say, Lindsay might, because she's been working out for, you know, 10 years longer than I am and is really strong and has built that base. 
The challenges we see with a young athlete like Michaela who bursts onto the World Cup scene are really interesting because it's really a race against time to get them up to the strength levels that we typically see in our World Cup races where we know she can cope with the demands of the World Cup and we're minimizing the chance of her getting injured. This summer, I got a new strength and conditioning coach. He's from Switzerland, and it's been really cool working with him. Our program is all-encompassing, the whole spectrum. Every single day, we do a little bit of balance, a little bit of stability, a little bit of core, upper body strength, lower body strength. I don't really like entering races that I don't have a chance at winning, so I try to prepare myself in training so that I always know I have a chance when I'm in the start. At the 2014 Sochi Games, 18-year-old Michaela Schifrin shocked the ski world, becoming the youngest slalom champion in Olympic history. Going into this World Cup season, Schifrin is the reigning Olympic, World Cup, and world champion in slalom. Despite her success, the young American is undoubtedly hungry for more. Right now, I'm starting to think more about how I can keep up my slalom and hopefully get to that top step in GS. And then maybe I might even add a couple Super Gs here and there this season. I'm so excited to have world championships at Vail Beaver Creek because I live pretty much at the base of that road that takes you up to the mountain. In some ways, it's a huge advantage that I can sleep at home, sleep in my own bed, you know, take a shower in my own shower, cook my own food. Hopefully I'll be able to take that energy and use that to propel me down the mountain.